Howdy YouTubers. Well, to date, all of my camping trips over the islands have been just like this, you know. I sail over, I pull the boat up to the high water mark, and then I set my campsite up just like that. It's a real carefree style of camping. You don't have to worry about, you know, your boat dragging anchor in the middle of the night. You've got heaps of room. And um, But up until recently, I've actually been given some thought to going out and actually doing an overnighter. The sailing row crews are designed by Colin Angus from Angus Rowboats. There's a 2.1 metre cabin, which has got plenty of room in it. And I've always said I want to go out and actually spend the night on board. So I suppose it's about time that I put my money where my mouth is and get out there and spend the night on board this thing. To do so though, I need to make a few small tweaks. And when I say this, I don't mean any disrespect to the guys from Angus Rowboats because they've really designed a fantastic boat here. As you can see, it sails like an absolute dream. It rows like a dream. It's got tons of dry storage. Um, so really, as far as the performance goes, I can't really fault it. I love it. It was a great boat to build. It was fun. The manual was so well written. But I need to make just a few small adjustments just to make, I guess, the, the overnight camping experience on board a little bit more stress-free. And what I'm talking about here is basically an area for food preparation, um, changing how the sail is connected to the deck, um, and just about how I might try to configure my bedding. So what this video is going to be about, it's just going to be about a few of the small changes, a few of the small things that I've made just to try to make that camping experience when I do the overnight trip a little bit more stress-free. As you can see, like, yeah, the rowing, I mean, it rows fantastically. You can, you, can, you can row at this sort of rate, you know, anywhere from two to four knots for several hours. Um, and if you get a gentle breeze, it's just wind-assisted rowing, which is really fun. So this video, like I said, it's just going to focus on a few things that I've made just to make the overnight experience, you know, a little bit more fun. And there'll be a follow-up video, which is going to show the overnighter, and hopefully everything goes to plan. So firstly, I'm just going to start by showing you the setup that I've got. So this is the trailer I've made. Now I've got it double decked. got the Hobie Tandem Island up on top. That's another fantastic boat. And down on the bottom is the road cruiser. You can see there, that's my beach dolly. Um, that's an extremely valuable piece of kit for getting the boat up and down the beach. You can see it fits on there really well. It's got the arcas, uh, sorry, the armors in tucked into the side. I'll leave the rigger on, just a bit more convenient. It saves me having to assemble it. Underneath, I've got a couple of pretty solid treated pine... Um, sleepers there and they're they're sealed up with a with a white primer and they have a blue nylon strip on just to make the boat slide on and it locates so easily this here is a, a, a cargo rack and i made that up out of pvc and that's going to carry what i'm going to call my kitchen bench it's essentially an aluminium tray and it's just going to serve as a food preparation area which i'll set up down at the back of the boat the other added bonus of this is it's going to allow me to move my bag, my gear bag, out of the cabin and have to have it somewhere I can sit it out of my way when I pull up. So I can get there, I can unstrap this tray and I can set it up on the rigger, which I'm going to show you in a very short time. And then I can get my gear out so I, my cabin's empty and ready to set up my bedding. So once the tray is taken off, there it is. I'll sit it down the back on the rigger. All I've got to do to finish this off I'm going to get a pair of legs, which I've already made. I'm just going to get down the hardware and buy the bolts to connect them to the front. And that's just going to make that a little bit more stable, especially for the style of cooking. I, I use a Trangia, which is a little alcohol stove. That's a fantastic bit of gear for, for camping, you know, cooking camping meals and stuff. So that's going to make a great little spot for me to prepare meals. Now inside the cab, as you can see, it's pretty spacious. I've got a couple of uh, self-inflating mats. And one of my concerns here is actually... I'm not sure what the temperature is going to be like. I think it's quite warm where we live here. But seeing as you're so close to the waterline and, and, and the hull's essentially four mil ply with a couple of coats of you know glass and resin. So I think it's actually going to be quite cool inside that cabin. So we'll have to wait and see. So one of the other issues I mentioned was just how the sail connects to the deck. Now it fixes down there to that stainless steel saddle that you can see. And basically tensions by a six to one um you know beckett block so but what actually happens is if you unstay the boom in a swirling wind that sail can can wrap and wrap around the mast until it will eventually get tension again once it's at this point it's sort of turned back into a sail so what i did here was i bent up a little stainless steel 
um, bracket, which I strapped on there with a bit of bike tie tube. That's a fantastic lashing gear too, by the way. But that'll allow me to get up there and release the, release the sail from the deck. And then I can connect it to that bracket, which is fixed directly to the mast. Therefore, it can spin around till the cows come home and it's never gonna turn back into a sail. And that'll just give me a bit more peace of mind during the night. So anyway, from here, I guess I've just got to get out there now and put these little tweaks to the test and there'll be a follow-up video, which I'm sure you'll all get to see and hopefully it goes to plan. So from me, all the best.